Hey, what's going on guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. In this lesson here, we're going to take a look at the concept of double stop bends. Alright, so uh, this lesson is going to be divided into three parts. The first part is going to be uh, what a double stop is, uh, what a double stop bend is, and the intervals that you're trying to create um, by playing these double stop bends. All right. Uh, the second part of the lesson is going to basically uh, show you pentatonic position number one and just give you a couple ideas of some double stop bends that you can do right in the you know, familiar pentatonic position number one area. Uh, and the third part of the lesson is going to give you a full fretboard diagram uh, showing you the entire key. We're going to be working in A minor for this particular lesson, so it's going to show you A minor spanned across the entire fretboard, showing you the full A minor scale plus the uh, A minor pentatonic scale overlapped with that, and then how you can go about uh, creating double stop bends of your own in any position on the neck. All right. So this lesson might be a little long, and uh, because of that, um, as with all my lessons, you can always view this from my website, and when you do that, the video clips are right below the video. All right. Uh, along with that, there's a um, written lesson which has all the fretboard diagrams that are included in this video. They are found on the page. So if you do that, you have all that stuff as well. Um, also on my website, I have my ever-growing lead guitar improv course. And, um, you know, that is uh, includes a few demo videos. So if you want to check out that and see what I have to offer as far as that is concerned, a link is uh, placed below as well. So uh, with that said, let me get started on these three parts for this lesson. Okay, so first off, what is a double stop? A double stop is simply just two notes that uh, are played on two separate strings, and when played together at the same time, uh, it is a double stop, all right? So you're probably familiar with a power chord, okay? That's a double stop, okay? The reason it's a double stop is because it's two separate notes on two different strings played at the same time. When you play those two notes together, the uh, they are separated by the interval of a perfect fifth, all right? So the, the root note, and then the next note would be a fifth above, so it's a perfect fifth interval, that's a double stop, okay? You can also play thirds, that would be a minor third, or you can play major thirds, okay? You can do this on other strings as well. Okay, so all these are, um, double stops. Now you can also do them on, they don't have to be uh, adjacent strings, you know, so you can play uh, intervals such as this. That would actually be a major sixth interval, okay, so I'm playing on the G string and the high E string. Or you can do, that would be a minor sixth interval, okay, and you can do thirds and all that stuff on the higher strings as well, so this would be a major third interval. This would be a minor third interval. Okay, so don't worry too much about um, the interval theory for now. You're gonna understand it as this lesson goes on. Uh, I do have other lessons that get deeper into that stuff. Um, I'll post links to those below. But um, what you wanna keep in mind is um, we really wanna just look at thirds and sixths for this lesson, and we wanna do so on the high three strings. Okay, so the high E string, the high B string, and the G string, or the high E string, the B string, the G string. All right, um, so when you're on the high E and the B strings, uh, major thirds look like this. Okay, that's a major third interval. All right, start on the B string, go to the E string, one fret lower, that's a major third. If you want to do a minor third interval, you start with your note on the B string, then play a note on the E string, but two frets lower. That's a minor third interval. Okay, so you have major thirds, and you have minor thirds. Okay, now if you're on the G and the B string, okay, a major third would be two notes on the same fret. So this is a major third. Okay, these are major thirds. If you want to do a minor third, you start with your note on the G string, and then uh, you play a note that's one fret lower on the B string. So these are minor third intervals. Okay, so 
major thirds, minor third. All right, so those are thirds. Now you have six. Six is essentially the reciprocal of a third. The opposite of a major third is a minor sixth, the, or reciprocal. The reciprocal of a minor third is a major sixth, all right? So a major sixth interval uh, would take place, you play your note on the G string, and then you play your second note on the E string, same fret. That would be a major sixth interval, so. Same fret, G and E strings. So that's a major sixth interval. A minor sixth interval would be um, you play your note on the G string, and then you play your next note on the E string, one fret lower. So this is a minor sixth interval. Okay, so you have major thirds, minor thirds, major thirds, minor thirds, major sixth, and minor sixth. All right. Those are the only intervals we're going to be looking at for this particular lesson, all right? Now, what we want to do is we want to uh, create these intervals, but we want to bend on the first string, and then we want to fret a note on the next string higher up, okay? So, instead of doing this, you would bend. Okay, or you can do, uh, you can create major third intervals as well. So, instead of going, here we go. Okay, so you're essentially creating these same intervals, but you're bending the note on the lower string and then fretting the note on the higher string. Again, you could do the same things for six. So instead of creating this interval, you could bend. So um, basically that's what we're going to be looking to do is we're going to be looking to create these intervals by bending the note on either the G string or the B string and then fretting a note on the higher string up, okay? So uh, for the next part of this, we're going to be looking at this done in pentatonic position number one. Okay, so what you see here is um, essentially this is pentatonic position number one and pentatonic position number two, all right? The reason I'm showing you both positions at the same time is because we're gonna be starting out pentatonic position number one, but we're gonna be bending, we're gonna be bending notes that are going to be hitting the notes that are found in the next pentatonic position, okay? This is all on the same key, okay? This is just two positions of the A minor scale. So the black dots are part of the A minor scale. The yellow dots are the pentatonic notes within the A minor scale. So the pentatonic scale is simply just a portion of the full A minor scale. All right. Um, further explanation about that is also found in the uh, description below. Okay. But um, just understand this is two pentatonic positions, also including the notes that are contained in the full A minor scale. All right. So. Here's your pentatonic position number one, okay? A minor pentatonic. Okay, if you want to play the full A minor uh, scale, you can include the other notes that are not yellow dots. Okay, and then this is also just the second position. Okay, so this is all part of A minor, A minor pentatonic. So, we're looking in this position here, okay? So essentially what you want to do is you want to start out on a note and then you want to bend it to another note that is part of the scale, okay? So if you start here on the um, eighth fret of the B string, you want to bend to the next note that's found in the scale. If you only bend it a half step, that's not part of the scale. If you bend it a full step, that is part of the scale, okay? So if you're starting on this note, you're going to want to bend it a full step, okay? Okay, and then you're going to do your double stop after you bend the note, and you're going to hit this note here. Why? Because that creates a 
the um, minor third interval, all right? So instead of going, you would go, okay? So that's creating a minor third interval. Um, or you could come here and uh, on the seventh fret of the G string, okay? And you could also bend that a full step Okay, because bending a full step, starting here, seventh fret, G string, bending a full step would land on a scale note. If you only bend it a half step, that wouldn't be a scale note. So you want to bend it to another note that's found within the scale, with the end result being um, either a major third interval or a minor third interval. Okay, so in this case, we have a minor third interval. So you see how I'm starting on the note, I'm then bending it to another note that's part of the scale, and then I'm hitting a note on a different string, such that the end result is a, in this case, a minor third. Okay? Now, if you wanted to start out, say, on this note here, fifth fret of the B string, and you wanted to bend that, well, the next note would be a half step up. So in this case, you would just do a half step bend, okay? So you see on this case, I'm starting out on this note, I'm bending a half step because the next note is only a half step away, and then the end result is a major third interval. Okay, so you have this, and you have this, and you have this, okay? always creating major thirds or minor thirds, all right? Whether it's a major third or minor third is dictated by the note that you're bending to, and that note that you're bending to should be part of the scale, all right? So you can do the same thing with six, okay? Um, so if you're starting here on the seventh fret of the G string, the next note is found a whole step away on the ninth fret, so that would be a full step bend, and then you would fret the note on the seventh fret up here, Okay. Okay, so you're bending a whole step. And the end result is a minor sixth interval. All right, so you can essentially do this as long as you're looking at these fretboard diagrams or if you have these scales memorized, you can always do this. You start on a note on either the G string or the B string, then you bend it up either a half step or a whole step, depending on you know what the next higher scale note is. And then you fret a note on either you know the, the B string or the E string, creating either major thirds, minor thirds, major sixth, or minor sixth, all right? And that's just right here in this one um, pentatonic position number one, all right? You can apply this concept to the entire neck of the guitar, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so what you see here is a full fretboard diagram of the entire A minor scale. And then the yellow dots indicate the notes that are the A minor pentatonic notes, okay? So the A minor pentatonic scale, or just the pentatonic scale in general, is always part of the full diatonic scale. Okay, so um, here we're in the key of A minor. This is your A minor scale spanned across the fretboard, and you have your five pentatonic positions. So. You can practice doing this in any one of your five pentatonic positions, okay? Pentatonic position number one, pentatonic position number two, number three, number four, number five, back up here, pentatonic position number one, okay? So the process is essentially the same. You start on a note on either the G string or the B string, you bend it to a note that is also found within the scale, and then you fret a note that's on a higher string, okay, either on the B string or the E string, such that the creation of these two notes are either major third, minor third, 
major sixth or minor sixth intervals, all right? So we looked at pentatonic position number one, okay, so you can be here. Okay, we can come up here. Okay. Okay, any of these things. All I'm doing is I'm simply jumping around pentatonic positions and just making sure that I'm not doing a half step bend when it should be a whole step bend or vice versa. Because if you only do a half step bend when it should be a whole step bend, um, it'll still create a, a, an interval of a third, but it won't necessarily be in key. So if you're playing over a backing track in a particular key, um, you know, it'll sound off, okay? So you wanna make sure that you're sticking within the scalar notes, all right? So, as I said, this fretboard diagram that you see here uh, containing both the, um, the full A minor scale and the A minor pentatonic scale is found right in the write-up of this lesson on my website. Um, the video clips are also available on the website, okay? So you can try these things out yourself. Uh, now that you know the theory, you can go ahead and you can create your own double stop bends and, um, all that good stuff, all right? So, um, you know, if you uh, like this lesson, if you found this helpful, and you like these fretboard diagrams that I have included in my videos, all this stuff is found in uh, my lead guitar improv course, all right? I have, I think, over 2,000 videos currently in my uh, lead guitar improv course. Lots of video backing tracks to practice over, practice in every key, all these different diagrams and stuff like that. Um, and this is just a concept that you could take and you could apply to the material that you find in that course. All right, so, um, you know, that's going to be it for this lesson. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to uh, hit me up. All right, and uh, thanks for watching.